some carbon offset credits so I can burn all my Angelica button books. Oh, honey, I'm sorry your book lady turned out to be a dinosaur. But you like the stories when you read them, so what does it matter? Doesn't it bother you that Betty Crocker is an invention of 20s era ad men? I know you're hurting, but that's no reason to lash out at me. Can you believe publishers would lie to their readers just to make an easy million bucks? A million bucks? Every book on the young adult charts is written by five idiots who just want to take advantage of kids. <gasps> I know five idiots. And they just cash their checks and get away with it every time. It's the perfect crime, as long as you don't mind betraying the trust of vulnerable young minds. The perfect crime, eh? <laughs> Whatever the job is, I'm not interested. A million bucks has changed stupider minds than yours. I like the beat. Play me the tune. We're taking down kids who read. Chapter book crowd, that's a juicy peach. But what's the cream? I'm putting together a tween lit gang right. Tween lit gang right? Tween lit gang right. But this babar needs a zephyr. A zephyr? You're the zephyr. This better not turn out like Kansas City. It won't be like Kansas City. <laughs> Come on, Skinner, you're the best kid man in the business. You've read their notes, searched their lockers, you know how tweens think. Oh, no thanks, gentlemen. I've got a nice, quiet life here, and I mean to keep it that way. Your friends are looking at my bloomers. Wash them again. Hmm. With your share of the money, you could get your own studio apartment. The refrigerator could have my magnets on it. I'm in. Come on, beautiful. I can't do the job without you. So what do you say? Boom! Oh! Our crew needs you, Bouvier. You've read enough fantasy novels to choke a hippogriff. Mm, it's true. I'm fluent in every imaginary language, from Dothraki to Parseltongue. Very sad. I wouldn't join one of your harebrained schemes for all the Japanese girlfriend pillows in Kyoto. We're not here for you. We're here for Lenny. Sorry, guys. I just adopted a capuchin monkey, and I can't leave it alone during the bonding phase. Wait, 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 wait. I want in. What does your crew need? A safe cracker? A, a wheel man? The caper is writing a kid's fantasy novel. Well, I, I don't like to brag about it, but uh, I did publish five modestly successful children's books. Hmm? All we need now is a computer guy. You have a computer? Uh, uh, yes. You're in. In what? I keep going over the job from every angle, but I can't shake the feeling that we're missing something. Relax. With the team we put together, our book will fly off the shelves. And we'll be sipping my ties on a beach in Shelbyville. Your group writing a book? But the only reason anyone would ever do that is... <gasps> profit. Like, no one ever writes for money, Lisa. I don't see your boyfriend, William Shakespeare, missing too many meals. I'll show you. I'll write a book myself. A personal story my readers will connect with. Wait, you're going to be all the guys? How would that work? Oh. This is how real writers do it. I'll just bang out 2,000 words, and then I'll stop. Even if I'm on fire, I gotta pace myself. <laughs> Chapter one. Wait, I can't start without music to inspire me. Why is Bach next to Muddy Waters? That's my problem. I gotta get these CDs organized. There, finished. Now, if I win just two more games of Online Boggle, I'll be ready to start writing. Spot, stop, sop, top tops, pot pots, opt ops, Post. Okay, we've cased a lot of tween books. What's their M.O.? The heroes are all orphans. And they're set in a place kids relate to. Say, a school. But it's actually magic. And the protagonist always discovers that he is supernatural. Okay, our book will be about an orphan who goes to a magical school where he discovers he's a vampire. Vampires? Like these? Huh? Or those? Huh? Or these guys? Huh? Oh. So many vampires with the fangs and the capes and the medals. Nobody knows how they earned them. Hey, this job's falling apart. Everyone head for a different airport, and we meet in Rio in a year with new faces. No one's going anywhere. Okay, the vampire genre is sucked out. All we gotta do is find a new monster to be our hero. Ah! A troll! Hey, I ain't a troll. Look, I bleed red, just like you. I, th the first part is always green, but it, it turns red. A troll, that's it. Our book could be about an orphan troll. Trolls live under bridges. The school should be under a bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge. And the cool kids are elves. The cheerleaders are pixies. The stoners are... Uh, gargoyles. And they play a complicated sport, which makes no sense, called Fuzzle Pitch. 
Yeah, yeah, that's good. <laughs> We've cracked it. We're gonna be rich. Pardon me, but are you scheming to co-author a successful series of children's fantasy novels? Okay, Stonehenge, let's see how good you are at eavesdropping without a trout. Uh, don't kill him. That's Neil Gaiman. I don't care if he's the guy who wrote Sandman Volume 1, Preludes and Nocturnes. No one spies on us. Perhaps someone of my experience would be a valuable addition to your crew. The king of fantasy books on our fantasy book writing team? Okay, Gaiman, you're in. Your job is to get lunch and lose the British accent. Cheeseburgers, french fries, I'm all over that, pal. Sitting in a coffee shop, I couldn't feel more like a real writer. <sighs> oh, better set up my Wi-Fi in case I need to do some research. But if I'm gonna use their free internet, I really should buy something. God, I love being a writer. <laughs> Lucinda placed the fifth shard in the stained glass window, which now clearly read, Your parents are alive. Gregor turned to his twin sister, and they both understood. Their journey was just beginning. The end. <laughs> it's good. Weekly reader star selection good. I just hope we put in enough steampunk, whatever that is. Who wants to see my cover mock-up? The Troll Twins of Underbridge Academy. I'm so proud of us. Oh, you didn't write any of it. But tuna didn't sell it itself. Oh, <gasps> I've got it! A mermaid falls in love with a boy on land. I'm a genius! Ah! Writing is the hardest thing ever! Huh? Hope you don't mind us printing our book in your room, Lise. Yeah, only your professional strength output tray can handle the weight of our manuscript. Correction, finished manuscript. Woohoo! Oh. in a magical prep school under the Brooklyn Bridge. Interesting. Uh -huh. This is a really good book. We know. We wrote it. I laminated the lunch menus and put them in a binder. But we have a problem here. Where's your fake author? Fake author? Fake author. If you don't have a made-up author with an inspirational tale, you don't have a book. Where's your Franklin W. Dixon? Where is your T.R. Francis? Where is your Stephen King? Stupid, stupid, stupid. Stupid! We forgot to create a fake author. That was Gaiman's job. Let's acid melt him in a bathtub. Okay, stay frosty. All we need to do is find some sap to pretend to be the writer of our book. So hit the floor and find some pathetic wannabe author. Coming to the book fair sure was a great idea. Because you can't write if you don't know what the competition's up to. <laughs> a dog wrote a bestseller? Is procrastinate! Oh, who am I kidding? There will never be a book with my name on it. Or your name could be on a book in ten minutes. Do I have to do any writing? No. Amen. Ah, a preteen prodigy. I like the hook. What's the phony backstory? I was raised in a traveling circus. My mother was a lady ringmaster and my father was a lion barber. I wrote my first story with clown lipstick on a flattened popcorn box. It was featured in the New Yorker's Best 40 Under 4 issue. Whoa, 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 whoa. Is R.L. Stein here? Because you just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> Go on, boss. Congratulations. You just sold your book for a million dollars. Gentlemen, to the Troll Twins of Underbridge Academy. Yeah. So, does it square us for Kansas City? Square us, golden books, Pop. What happened to me? In one vulnerable moment, I became the thing I hated most. A literary fraud. But, Lise, when this book comes out, you'll be beloved. Not just by Millhouses, you'll get attention from Jacksons, Xanders, even Aidens. Oh, I've always wanted an Aiden. 
Here it is, an advanced copy. The Vampire Twins of Transylvania Prep? Where's the trolls? The trolls are now vampires, the Brooklyn Bridge is now a castle, and Fuzzle Pitch is now Blood Ball. Oh, weak, weak, and lame! How could the publishers change our book? If they had been in charge of the Sistine Chapel, the whole thing would be vampires instead of the Pope's private naked dude mural. Look, we market tested the book, and it really got dinged on the whole trolls thing. I mean, dinged. So we made some changes. Don't feel bad. Before we got our hands on Twilight, it was about a girl who fell in love with a golem. But teenagers weren't gonna spend their allowances to join Team Shmuel. But the trolls were the best part! Do the characters still say trolly instead of cool? No. Oh, that is so untrolly! Hey, if you don't want your words changed, write a screenplay. We own your book. So why don't you go and cry into your million dollar check? How could they do this to our book? It was the singular vision of seven people. No way! What you're feeling is called pride of authorship. You thought you only cared about money, but you actually care more about what you've created together. British Fonzie is right. Our story is actually more important than money. I was gonna buy the apartment next door and fill it with dolls. But now that just sounds stupid. They can't do this to us. We've gotta fight back. Yeah, let's get oh, it! Yeah. He's right. We gotta fight. Rule number one of book heists, never fall in love with the book. We queer the deal, we lose the money. Bart, remember the thousand year war between the trolls and the ogres? Yeah? Now it's a dance contest at the vampire prom. <gasps> Let's steal back our book. Somewhere in that building is a computer with their sucky version of our masterpiece. The book prints at midnight, so if we swap in the original version, they'll print the wrong book. Our book. And before the publishers can do anything about it, the troll twins of Underbridge Academy will be in every bookstore in America. This is the Fuzzle Pitch Finals, and tonight we drink from the Wazzle Cup. Hello, I'm the pizza delivery man. We didn't order a pizza. No, of course you didn't. The establishment I work for delivers pizzas to everyone and then gives the customer the option of accepting or refusing delivery. That's a terrible business strategy. No, no, it's quite sound. Okay, fine. Where's the pizza? Pizza? through here. All we have to do is upload our file and... Good evening, gentlemen. Kansas City. Kansas City. So you thought you would unruin your book. If it's any consolation, you never had a chance. Woohoo! All right! Someone in your gang tipped me off to your little caper. A traitor? Mm. 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 I bet it's the Earl of Marmalade over here. Oh. No, guys. It was me. <gasps> it can't be. It's always a dame. But why? Because a little girl wants her dream to come true. My name is finally on a book. And they're letting me write the sequel. A hard deadline is just the kick in the pants I need to focus and get some serious writing done. Now to enter the password and to authorize final publication. My favorite theme of wall calendar. Lisa, would you care to do the honors? I'm sorry. Oh, by the way, the audiobook is only available abridged. Abridged! <laughs> well, we may have lost, but we gave the bad guy a laugh. That's something. Our book! The real one! Yes! Oh, wow. Wonderful words! No need to thank me, boys. Hey, you wouldn't say that unless there was a need to thank you. You could never have printed your version of the book without the publisher's password. So I pretended to betray you. Then after he typed the password, I secretly switched the flash drives. You switched the drives? I got the idea from every movie ever made. And the best part is, my face is still on the back flap. Poor Lisa.
Did it never occur to her that there might be three flash drives? I've heisted my way to the bestseller list once again. And the most brilliant part is, I don't even know how to read. Thank you.